Amen. We bless God for this morning. Um, we want to welcome Mrs. Rita Juma to our service. Is Pastor coming? Okay. So Pastor Juma will come in very soon. Um, we want to continue with, from where we left off the other time. So what were you talking about the other time? I think these guys are closer to me, so I'll start with them. What were we? You have the microphone. Say it and let's see. We're talking about eschatology. So what did we talk about? It's a, bra a big thing. So exactly what were we talking about? Someone else? Anybody? The teaching of the end times. Yes, that's eschatology. <laughs> <laughs> what did we talk about? Types of death. Types of death. Okay, we talked about death. See, if you're going to go to heaven, for those of us that are... Oh, Francis. Okay, Francis, use my mic. We talked about the three types of death, which is spiritual death, physical death, and the second death, which is eternal separation. So we thank God that Francis has bailed out. Hey. All right. I want to introduce to us our deacon, uh, Benson and Sister Angela. Can you rise to your feet? Please take a seat. Uh, so as President Anders said, we are doing two things today. We're going to have church as normal. We will have the second part, which is a dedication. I'd like to also introduce our mother, that is the mom of Angela. Mommy, would you rise so that people can see her? Yeah. I remember mommy. <laughs> yeah. But God is good. He is very good. He is a God who is very faithful. And no matter what happens in your life, if you are faithful to him, he will definitely come through for you. You did not hear me. Amen. Just remain faithful. Stay on course. Don't lose hope. Don't change course. Just stay on the course of being faithful. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says that God is not unjust to forget. Amen. Amen. So no matter what it is that you are doing for the Lord or even for somebody, even when they are not paying back with gratitude and, you know, thanks and all of that, just stay on the course. Amen. It pays. So we looked at um, death um, as, as a gateway to the as I call, to life. Amen. 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 So that death, death is the gateway. If you are going to enter into life, it is death that will lead you there. And I'm talking about life. I'm talking about those of us that are saved, those of us that have given our lives to Jesus. We enter into life after we have slept. Those who do not know Jesus Christ, when they close their eyes and they die, they enter into eternal damnation. And that is not the destination that God intends for any person. Today is the fourth Sunday, isn't it? Or let's say it's a gospel Sunday. Or was it last week? 
last week. So last week was celebration for many people. So today is Gospel Sunday. <laughs> if you are going to enjoy life, and when I talk about life, I'm not talking about the parties and the things that we do here on this earth. But life is actually life eternal with God. Spending eternity with God. What our brother read to us um, in Revelation 21 is talking about after everything has been completed. When Jesus Christ has returned to the earth with the church and has lived here with the church for that thousand years, the millennial period, there will come a time where the final judgment will occur. And the Bible says that judgment, or for that judgment, is for all those people who do not have their names written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. And then after that, the Bible says that death, Hades, the devil, demons, all those powers will now be bound together with all those who did not know the Lord. And they will be placed in the lake of fire. Hallelujah. Amen. Then this earth and the heavens as we see will burn and will roll away. Then 21 says, a new earth, the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is the hope that every one of us is to have if we want to spend this eternity with God. And as I was saying in the first discussion, if you are going to have this, you need to escape the first death, which is spiritual death. Spiritual death is a person, soul, and spirit separated from God. And that, the solution to that is Jesus Christ. You have to have Jesus Christ in your life. He becomes your Lord and Savior so that you escape spiritual death. Physical death is for every person, whether you are righteous or unrighteous. Whether you are a Christian or a Buddhist or whatever, every single person that is born onto this earth will die. God, the son, because he became man, had to die. Hallelujah. And so it is a, a thing for every person. Death is the, the common denominator for every person, the rich, the poor, the, 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 the tall, the, the short, the big, the fat, everyone. Death is the common thing for all of us. And so it is important that every person, you know, you, you understand that this life as we have it here is not... The end of it. Some say that life is as you live it. And so do the best you can. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy this life. And when you die, that is the end of it. But if you are a child of God, you know that it's not true. If you are a spiritual person, and if I say a spiritual person, I'm not talking about being a Christian alone, but there are people who believe in other things which are spiritual things. And so they are spiritual people. Although they, they, are, they are spiritual, but they don't, their spirituality is not with God. All those people, they know that there is something else after you have passed on from here. And so they, some say that when you die, if you live your life on this earth and you do good, and then you die, you will come out, if you're a good person, you may come out as a cow in the second life. Uh, I don't know who, which one of us here wants to come out as a cow. If you dare turn out to be a cow, we will eat you. We will, we will, we will butcher you. We will do roast and, and mince meat and we'll do all kinds of things with you. Hallelujah. It is absurd to think that a human being, after they have died, will, will come back, if they have done good, and be a cow. Oh, come on. If, if you were bad, then you become some, some weird, bad stuff that you don't want to be. <laughs> a, a cockroach. <laughs> we will read for us John chapter 5, verse 28 to 29. If you put it on the screen, we will read together. You can't see it. John chapter 5. If anyone is there, you can... Can help us because I'm not sure we can see what's on the screen. So, 
So what we're going to talk about this morning is the resurrection. So the first one was death. Today we want to look at resurrection. I'm going to do my best to finish this. Yet did I finish death? I did not finish. Second service, I did not. All right, so go and listen to the or watch the first service. You'll be all right. <laughs> I've summarized everything. <laughs> yeah, but so today we are looking at the resurrection. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear. Aha. Uh-huh. Let's read it again. Go back to 28. Let's read it together. All who are in their graves, those who have died 2010, those who have died 100 years ago, those who have died 2,000 years ago, those who have died, what, 6,000 years ago, every person who has had an encounter and a walk with God, Jesus says here that do not be amazed. When a person dies, after four days, decomposition starts taking place. You see that different things happen. The person will bloat up and burst and then uh, things will, you know, destroy. Everything will, will vanish. If you are incremated, that is um, incinerated, your flesh will be burnt and they will blend your bones. And when they finish, <laughs> Baby, <you> said, mm. <laughs> when they finish, they will put it in a vase and give it to your family. Maybe they will go and bury it or they go and pour it somewhere or maybe they will keep it in the, in the living room. But the Bible says that, do not be amazed at this. For a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear. How are they going to hear? How are you going to hear his voice? There has to be something in God that is in you now. That now that you are alive. There has to be something of God in you in order for you to die and to hear his voice. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And that is why this morning I I want to make sure and I want to be certain that you understand what we are talking about. All that I'm trying to say is that give your life to Jesus. Hello? So everything I'm going to say in the next one hour is give your life to Jesus. Other than that, This verse will not apply to you. You will not hear his voice. The next time you resurrect is that you will resurrect standing before the white throne judgment. And then you, Bible says that everything you have done in this world will be played out to you. Then after that, just like the Bible says to the the, the, the servant, the three servants, the one that had one, it says, you wicked and slothful servant. Be bound and taken out of this place, my presence, into the outer darkness. Where there is pain and gnashing of teeth and mourning and groaning. If you do not hear anything this morning, what I want you to hear is make sure that before you leave this place, if you are online with us, make sure that before you switch off your TV or your set, whatever you are watching from, you would have given your life to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So all those who are in their graves will hear his voice. I'll try and come back to it at some point. Let's carry on, 29. When they hear their voice, they will come out those who have done good will rise to life, to live. And those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. Hallelujah. All right, let's go back to our slides. 
Those who have done right have lived their lives in accordance to the will of God, have lived for him. The Bible says that they will rise to live. And those who have not done that will rise to be condemned. So when we talk about the resurrection, the resurrection is the hope of the believer. It is the hope of the church. You know, when we have a test, we, 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 Pensa, we say this a lot. Christ in you. Christ in you. So this is what he's talking about. That the whole point of being a believer is this hope that you are going to resurrect. The hope that you, everything that is going on in this world, it might not be great. Things may not be going well in your life. You might have done everything. It doesn't seem to work. And maybe you are sick. You're carrying something. You've prayed. You've done everything. It's not, it's not working, but you are a child of God. He's saying that your hope is that there is a resurrection for you. Hallelujah. There is a resurrection for the church. And that is the hope. That is what keeps you living for the Lord. That is what keeps you serving the Lord. That is what keeps you to remain pure for the Lord. That is what keeps you to, to live the way God wants you to live. Because of the hope. And that hope is that you will spend eternity with God. That hope is that this world is passing away and everything there is in it. But you will not pass away with it. Hallelujah. Okay, so Philippians chapter 3, the verse 20. Um, okay, let's, let's take one of them because of the, let's take 1 Thessalonians. Let's read from the 13. 13, let's read the 1 Thessalonians. You can pick up the rest and read later on. Hey, guys, you have to be quick because my time is running. Or can I get... Okay. Read from 13 to 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. It means that the child of God has hope of a resurrection. The rest of the world have no hope. All right, let's continue. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in him. Where? In him. If you fall asleep in him, then there is the assurance that you will resurrect to the resurrection of life. For we, for we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Next. According to the lost word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. What that means is that if the trumpet sounds, if Christ should come, those who have died will resurrect first. Then those who are alive, for instance, if you should come now, all of us will not change until those who, have, who are in their graves. So the first people to rise is, where? is who? Those in their graves. Then the, those who are alive will be the second phase. They will change. And I tell you, it is beautiful. I have to say it all the time. Every time I talk about these things, it is beautiful. You have to see it. When you see dead souls, people rise out of the ground, it is beautiful. So, for the Lord himself, so he's saying that Jesus Christ himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead. So, the shout, the voice we heard earlier on, Jesus talk, spoke about, and th this Again, it says Jesus himself will come down and with the loud command. The archangel will be doing that. The trumpet of God will sound. Then the dead in Christ will rise first. Continue. After that, we who are still alive. This is, anyway. We who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds 
to meet the Lord in the air. And so, we will be with the Lord forever. Let's read the last bit. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. We read this normally at funerals, but it is actually for the church. For the ones that are preparing ourselves to go to heaven. So, if you go back to the slides, we cannot forget that for you, the believer, your hope is this resurrection that Jesus promises us and Paul is talking about. Physical death is, has been as a result of sin. I explained this the last time. Sin is the reason why we die. Physical death, death is the outward expression of the spiritual death, which is the consequences of sin. So, sin brought with it as a byproduct, death. And every person, as I said, will die. When Francis was telling us the last time, recapping what we did, as I said, physical, spiritual death, the first part is a separation from God. The solution is Jesus. The second bit, which is physical death, is death that happens when the soul, the spirit of the person, leaves the body. And the third bit, which cannot be changed, the decision to choose which life you have is made whilst you are alive. So when you are dead, you cannot change the story. Hallelujah. So when a person dies without knowing God, knowing Jesus for themselves, Christ, being their Lord and personal Savior, that individual will encounter the third death, which is called the second death or the eternal death. And that is a separation from God eternally. And I told you that there is no change. There are false teachings. Please go back to the slide. We don't want it. We've done with this, so. You can share it with the church after um, today. There is no going back. The teaching that, you know, we call it purgatory, that you can change your ways. You no, know, something can happen. I don't know how that would happen in the afterlife. So that you can have access to God. You can, your, your sins can be forgiven. It's a false teaching. If you have imbibed that, I want you to, to, to vomit it out because it will deceive you. So, the resurrection we are talking about, we're saying that sin or physical death is the outward expression of the spiritual death, which is the consequences of sin. Jesus Christ is the solution to that. Now, since man is spirit, soul, and body, the redemption which must occur is going to take care of these three things as well. That is why you're going to have a spiritual body. And so, the quickening of both soul and body, hence the need for the resurrection. As we go on, we will read some of these texts, probably 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the verse um, 50 going. But let's wait for, for now. Let's go on to the next slide. So, when we talk about the resurrection, we will not be able to read the whole of 1 Thessalonians, but the 4 verse 16 to 17 or 13 to 18 that we read is the event. The event of the resurrection. But there's a process. Now let's read the 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Because it's a long one, it needs to be quick. And then we will do the 5, 1 to 5. From the 34. 34. Our brothers. Yes. Yeah, it's fine. Come back to 
Am I right? Go on. Okay. Right. So come back to your senses as sh and you should stop. Pick it again. Come back to your senses as you should and stop sinning. For some of you, I say this to your shame, don't fully know God. But someone will ask, how are the dead ra raised? What kind of body will they have when they come back? You fool, the seed you plant does not come to life unless it dies. 37, and what you plant is not the form that it will be, but a bare kernel, whether it, it be wheat or something else. But God gives the plant the form he wants, the form he wants it to have, and to each kind of, of seed its own form. 39. Not all flesh is the same. Humans have one kind of flesh. Animals in general have another. Birds have another, and fish have still another. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the splendor of those in heaven is of one kind, and, and that of those on earth is of, of, is, is of another. One kind of splendor belongs to one kind of splendor belongs to the sun, another to the moon, and still another to the stars. In fact, one star differs from another star in splendor. This is how it will be at the resurrection of the dead. What is planted is decaying. What is raised cannot decay. The body is planted in the state of dishonor, but is raised in the state of splendor. It is planted in weakness, but is raised in power. It is planted in physical body, but it raised in, sp in a spiritual body. If there is any physical body, there is also a spiritual body. This indeed is what is written. The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last man, Adam, became a life-given spirit. The spiritual does not come first, but the physical does. And then comes the spiritual. The first man came from the dust of earth. The second man came from heaven. Those who are made of the dust are like the man from the dust. Those who are heavenly are like the man who is from heaven. Just as we have borne the likeness of the man who was made from the dust, we also bear the likeness of the man from heaven. Brothers, this is what I mean. Mortal bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God, and what decays cannot inherit what does not decay. Let me tell you a secret. Not all of us will die, but all of us will be changed in a moment, faster than our eyes can blink at the sound of the last trumpet. Indeed, the trumpet will sound, and then the dead will be raised never to decay, and we will be changed. For what is decaying must be clothed with what cannot decay, and what is dying must be clothed with what cannot die. Now, when what is decaying is clothed with what cannot decay, and what's dying is clothed with what cannot die, then the, what, then the written word will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Now, the, death, the sting of death is sin, and sin's power is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus the Messiah. Therefore, my br dear brothers, be steadfast, unmovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that the work that you do for the Lord is not wasted. So the process is that this mortal body, this flesh, he, you see, he compared it to when you have a seed of wheat or corn, when you put it to the ground, it grows and then it gives you a plant with leaves, green leaves, and produces fruit and all of that. What is basically trying to say that is that when we are planted, that is, when we are buried, we will rise into a new thing. Hello? When the child of God goes to sleep and they are resurrected, they don't resurrect to this body again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is why he's saying that the thing that is of heaven is different from that which is of the earth. They, they are not the same. You cannot expect a resurrection into this body 
which grows old and tired and, you know, all the things that we experience with our bodies currently. But you, you resurrect into a life, a new life that is not the same as you went to the ground with. But you, you resurrect with a body that is powerful and strong and beautiful and above all, spiritual. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, in the, the resurrected body, it says the principle of life of that resurrected body is different from this life. This life, we carry blood in order for us to live. If your blood finishes, you are dead. The Bible says that life, the life of the animal is in the, is in the, in the blood. And so for this earth, the principle of life for, for human beings is the blood that raised in them. And that makes it different from the life or the kind of body that will sustain a heavenly life. Are you with me? Uh -huh. so, so that is what Paul is trying to talk about here. We are sown in uh, perishable, but we are raised in perishable. We are sown in corruption, but we are raised in incorruption. We, we, the body, as I said, you see, I, I always say this uh, whenever I'm talking about these things. And I know that if you take your picture, when you were born, when you were 10 years old, when you were 15, 20, 30, and those of us that are old, you will see that there's been a change or changes are happening. I'm sure Edu you know, uh, uh, wasn't like this. His hair was, okay, was black and plenty. And his tummy was not big. When you see me, in my days, eh, I was slim. I was, I was, I was strong. I, I, yeah, I was, I had a six pack. Now I'm working on it, I'm trying to get my six pack back. <laughs> when you see me, I run, I run everywhere. You see, <laughs> but now changes are happening. My hair is going. <laughs> yeah, it's going. And you realize that you are growing. That type of life is for this earth. But the, the life that we are talking about, which Paul says is a mystery, is a life that does not succumb to the elements of this world and the things that make us sick and weak and, and, and die and all the, the things that we experience. I pray that you would desire to have this life. To have this body. You see, that body is like the, the body of Christ at resurrection. And it is a powerful body. As we go on, we'll talk about that. But you see, so when we talk about the resurrection, it is an event because Christ will appear and he will command everyone to rise. And the Bible, Jesus said in John that all those who will hear his voice will rise. If you lived for him, you will, live to, you will rise to life. If not, you will rise to be condemned, to go to eternal lake of fire. And the process is that when he shouts, all those who are with him, who lived for him, will rise. And those who are alive, he says, in a twinkle of an eye, just like a blink of your eye, when you blink, the next time you see yourself, you are in a new body with the Father, with Jesus Christ in the air. Hallelujah. And that is the next thing we will talk about if the, the Lord allows us, the rapture. You will, we, will, we will rise, we will be caught up with him in the air. And there will be a seven-year period of, of, of life with God and with the angels and with all the heavenly hosts in heaven. 
for seven years. So during the tribulation period on this earth, the church is taken out. But you need to have the resurrection that we are talking about in order for you to enjoy what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm going to talk about it next time. All right. So let's go on to the next slide. I'm sure I, I didn't really go into the third point over there, but the notes are there. So when we talk about the resurrection in the Old Testament, it is it, it, there plenty. Job spoke about it. Isaiah, Joseph's deliverance is also another thing from the pit. It's another thing that talks about the resurrection. Um, Isaac's, Isaac's return from the sacrifice and the examples of those raised from the dead in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, it is affirmed by Paul, as we have just read, and prophetically declared by John, demonstrated and guaranteed by Jesus being raised from the dead. So we've, we read the first one over there. We've read 1 Corinthians 15. The, the other one you can read later on. And then the other time we spoke about Lazarus. And Lazarus' um, story gives us a very clear picture of what, um, what it, 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 it is like um, when death comes and the, whatever happens behind the scenes over there. Now, this is just giving us the fact that the resurrection is covered in the Old Testament. It is covered in the New Testament. There are plenty of examples of resurrection in the Bible. So when you have the slides, you can take your time to read through the text over there. Let's go on to the next one. So the resurrection, it is a great mystery involving a transformation or a change. So a transformation or a change, those who are in their graves will be resurrected into a new body. Those who are alive will be changed. So when we talk about the resurrection, that is, it is a mystery that all of a sudden, a person that is able to eat and drink and, you know, go about everything is changed into a spiritual person. It's a mystery. And those who are in their graves, as I was saying, thousands and thousands of years, if they live for God, all of them are going to be transformed. Now, the resurrection is bodily. Yes? When Jesus resurrected, he wasn't um, a spirit. It's a bodily resurrection. You'll be like that. The body you have now, you're going to have the same thing. Only that this time, it will be beautiful. It will not be uh, old and, you know, rickety. <laughs> but it will be very beautiful. God gives a new, powerful, heavenly body to us. If you don't like your nose, if you're in this room and you don't like your nose, uh, sometimes a lot of our sisters have issues with their bodies. Huh? Men as well, eh? Ah. Oh, okay, they are saying the men as well. But the sisters have a lot of issues with it. You know, my nose is like this, and my tummy is like that, and, you know, and uh, because of that, nobody likes me. Everybody likes you. You must love what you have. Hello? If there's a lady sat next to you, tap them and tell them, love what you have. <laughs> tap them, tap them. If they are not alive, slap them and tell them, love what you have. <laughs> Hello? Because that is how God made you. Are you here? That is how God made you. If you don't love yourself, how would you expect anyone to love you? If you don't treat yourself as a, a beautiful woman created by God in the image of God, you might not have big breasts and big bottom, but the, what, the, what you have is what God gave you. Amen. Love it. If the boys don't like it, let them go. Are you with me? Uh -huh. That is how God made you. If you love yourself, you will carry yourself well. You will carry yourself well. You will not live to please anybody. And so people are doing all kinds of things to their bodies in order to please the man. Hey. You put a syringe on your lips and then you put something in it. And then it puffs up like that.
May the Lord help our sisters. But they are not in this church. Amen. 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 That body is a powerful body. And you must love it now because you're going to resurrect with that same body. Only that it is a, it will be a spiritual body. That body cannot be sick anymore. It will not die anymore. It, 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 that body is, is going to be is an agile body. A body that trans, can move through walls. Can move through space and time. And I love it when I talk about it because I, I, I say that whilst I'm here on the earth with Jesus Christ for that millennial period, I can actually shoot up to heaven and, and, and do some heavenly stuff. Worship God with the 24 elders and, you know, the angels do some stuff in heaven and come back down like I've traveled to Ghana or to Dubai or something like that. Uh, you, you think it's a joke? It's not. Jesus said to Mary, I need to show myself to my father. Where do you think he went? He went and he came back. And then when he was in Acts chapter 1, finally, the people saw him being taken up. Do you know that Jesus in heaven is not a spirit? He is actually a man. Hands, feet, eyes, and everything because he took on the form of a man and went up with it. And that is the same body you and I are going to have. You can go and come. This time you don't need a passport. If you are here and you're looking for British in Krata, British, uh, British, uh, British paper to live, eh? that one, you don't need anything more. The passport you need now to be able to access heaven and back is your salvation. Hello? If you have that, if Jesus is in your life, you have the passport, you have the visa to travel anywhere in the world because nobody can restrict you. Hello? And that is why you need to have Christ in your life. The resurrection is to judgment and rewards. The resurrection is to what? You remember when we talked about death, we said that death is the state. It is an intermediary or intermediate state where the child of God waits for a resurrection and the, 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 the bema seat uh, uh, judgment or rewards. And for the unbeliever, they wait death. They wait in Hades for the day they will resurrect to stand before the white throne judgment. So, the resurrection is, is a resurrection to judgment and rewards. When, when the child of God resurrects, they will stand with Christ in heaven at the marriage feast, the marriage supper of the Lamb. That is where your crowns are going to be given to us. And so, for, the, for Christian, a Christian is not going to go through judgment as the world will do. Because their judgment and everything has been paid for by Christ. As you are going through life and you are living your life for Christ and he is pruning you and whatever Christ does to you to shape you, it is that judgment the child of God is going through. What is expected of you, as I said the other time, is that you, every child of God must do something for God. Because if you don't do something for God, you will not have any crown. I said this the other time. There will be no crown for you to lay down. Since when, they, when, when, they, when they, they, they worship in heaven begins, the 24 elders, everybody, they all fall prostrate and they lay their crowns down. But if you don't have any crown, what are you going to lay down? bareheaded people cannot, cannot, cannot stay there. And that is why you must do something for God. And that is why I always stress this. It probably might become somebody that people might, people might remind, remember me for. You are created as a handiwork of God. Created in Christ Jesus unto every good work which he prepared in advance for you to do. Hello? So, the day you gave your life to Jesus Christ, there was something that you were supposed to accomplish for God. And that is what you are supposed to engage with. You're supposed to do it, keep doing it until the day he calls you. And that is why I always say that if you are an elder, you, don't, you, you come to a point and then you say, uh, uh, 
in our system, a lot of elders and deacons and deaconesses, some of them, they do that a lot. And uh, we have served our time. When we were, uh, the church was beginning, we really served. Now it's our time to sit and let the others also do it. No. Every one of us is supposed to work until the end. Hello? Yes. You cannot, you cannot stop. Unless you are retired. Even if you are retired, you still have to do something for God. Are you with me? Yes. So everybody must have something to do. And that is where you are going to get your rewards. When we talk about the, the judgment seat of Christ, that's what we'll be dealing with. And we'll go into the quality of work that you do for God. The Bible talks about some of the works that we do. It says some are, are of uh, the quality of gold. Others of the quality of silver. Others are of the quality of uh, precious stones. Others of the quality of wood. Others of the quality of hay. And all of these things must be tested by fire. He says the one whose work stands will go through. The one whose work does not stand and is bent, he says they will, they will go through, but as, as through fire. Hello? So, so God always looks for quality. That is why he always compares our works with these metals and the, the things that burn. So what do you do for God? Maybe when, let me wait when we get there. So it is for rewards, resurrection. If you did not serve God, live for God, you are, you are in this room, you are watching us, and Christ is not your savior, then yours will be for judgment. And after that, the lake of fire, which does not stop. Remember, at that point, you are spirit. Spirits don't die. So you are in it forever. Forever. Next slide. So the nature of the resurrection relationship, it will bear some relation to the old body. I've already spoken about that already. So, uh, And we read... 1 Corinthians 36, 37. So, the reality of it, our glorified bodies will be real and tangible. I can hold you, you can hold me. If you see elder, you will know it's elder. If your wife sees you, she will know it is you. Only that you can't be married there. Uh -huh, because spirits don't marry. That resurrected body is raised in incorruption. It means that it cannot be corrupted. That body cannot be corrected, uh, corrupted. Sin cannot take hold of it. If right now you struggle with a sin... You know, the Bible says there are uh, 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 entanglements and easily besetting sins. And so that sin holds you bound. You need to be free from that. But <laughs> that body you're going to have, sin cannot come near it. Are, are you with me? Yes. And so, so, so sin has made us what we are now. And all of us are going to die at some point. But that body <laughs> has so much power in it that sickness cannot come near it. Pain, weakness, and death has no power over it. You must yearn for that. Are you here with me? You must yearn for that. Next one. The nature of the resurrection body, we're looking at the glory of it. Resurrected bodies will be adapted to a glorious, immortal life in heaven. Imperishable, it cannot die. Not subject to decay and weariness. Jesse Dixon sang a song. The weary shall cease their troubling. And the wicked 
forgot to lose. And the, yes, the wicked shall cease their troubling, and the weary shall be at rest. The wicked shall cease their troubling, and the weary shall be at rest. And all of the saints of the ages, they're going to be his feet and be his. You should, you should, you should, you should listen, listen to him. Jesse Dixon, he's a powerful man of God. He died. A few years ago. I remember singing with him at Fountain Gate. Yeah, we invited him um, Apostle Nagacha's time. And um, we were rehearsing the song. So when he came, we sat down. He said, ah, he sang it more than I have. I'm singing it. So you, you will do these songs. Hey, we shared the stage together. I really love that time. Wow. Only that I don't have a video. <laughs> it, was, it was a good time. But Jesse Dixon is a great man of God. Just search him up and watch some of his songs. Some of the, some of the songs he wrote himself. Um, I am redeemed, bought with a, a, a price. Jesus has changed my whole life. If anybody asks you who I am, just tell them I am redeemed. Hallelujah. You were young at the time, isn't it? So you don't remember those things. Um, Apostle Megacha loved that song. And every time he wants me to sing it. I am redeemed. That's what we're talking about. To be redeemed. To be purchased by the blood of Jesus. And that when that happens, you are sure that if death comes at any time, you are ready. If death comes at any time, you are assured. There was an elder that was about to die. And when I visited the family, the wife was telling me, the man was not troubled. I sat in his car. We were equipped for an evangelism in Warsaw. And he, he came to give me something and drove me back to the city center. We were just chatting, 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 chatting. And the next time I heard, I heard is that he was dead. But, but the, the wife was saying that he, he, he was so assured because he knew where he was going. He wasn't worried. And was assuring his wife and telling, them, telling her everything. We want to go like that. Hallelujah. Not when you're about to go and you're afraid. And, and, and all kinds of things. Why? Because maybe you haven't done something well. Live your life for Jesus. Live your life for him. Because when you know you are redeemed, you are assured that if it comes at any time, you are ready for him. If you know you are here and you know that if, if death should come right now, you are not ready. I'm pleading with you. I am pleading with you. Please, make sure, make it, make sure you are ready today. Make sure you are ready today. And that is why I'll throw an invitation to you if you are here and don't know Jesus Christ. Or maybe you're not walking the way he wants you to walk. You need to change and make things sure. So, that body has, has power and it is an immortal life that you're going to have. It, it does not perish. It is not subject to decay and weariness and the troubles that we see in this world. That body is agile, the agility of it. That body can pass through space with lightning speed due to the mighty power that quickens it. You see, when Jesus, I said I'll come back to John chapter 5 verse 28. Jesus says that all those who will hear his voice. In Romans chapter 8, the verse 11 says that if this power which raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, then this same power will do what? It will quicken your mortal body. See, so that power that quickens our mortal body is what will make you here. Are you with me? It's that power that will make you here when Christ shouts for you. It might be a, a, a loud shout, but your name will be in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You will hear your name in the grave. And you will rise. Why? Because there is a quickening power that is in you. 
And that same power is what will make the child of God able to travel to places, to heaven, my favorite, and come back. Remember, if you love Jolof, and you love uh, Banku and Tilapia, you can still eat it with that body. You are shocked there. <laughs> you can still eat it with that body. You won't be fat. <laughs> All right, so subtlety. It will have the power of penetrating solid substances, walls, mountains, and we shall walk through those things. That is what that body you're going to have is. Next one. Next one. Okay, read this one later. Next one. Ah, uh, okay. Let me read. I, I added a slide, but if I ask these guys to put it up, it will take time. So let me read it quickly. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse seventeen to fifteen. If you can put it on the screen, it will be great. We are reading four seventeen through to chapter 5, 1 to 5. For our present troubles are small and won't last long. I'm reading from the NLT. Yet, they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we see now. Hello? Tell someone, don't look at the troubles you are seeing now. Don't look at the pain you are going through now. Don't look at the challenges that are around you all over. He says, those things cannot be compared to the things that Christ is about to give us. Hallelujah. So, he's saying that for our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Mm. Yet, they produce for us glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. 18. So we don't look at the troubles we see now. Rather, we fix our gaze. Somebody say, fix your gaze. Fix your gaze. Push somebody and tell them, fix your gaze. Fix your gaze. You see, it is, it is something that you must do purposely. You, you, have to, you have to do this with intent. Because there are so many things that are going on around us. Those things, as the Bible says, that Jesus fixed his gaze. Jesus fixed his eyes on the prize. Hallelujah. And so because of that, what did he do? He shunned and the scorn and everything that came with it. Because there was a prize. Please put that thing up there. Look at them. Guys, are you following? Move to where I am now. Shall we all say a word of prayer for them at the back there? <laughs> Everybody, please, let's pray. They need, they need something. What is going on? So we do not look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Verse chapter 5. For we know that when this earthly tent, this body that you have, that I have, for we know that when this earthly tent that we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven. That uh, an eternal body made for us by God himself and, and not by human hands. Two, we grow weary in our present bodies. Another version says we groan. 
We grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like, like, like new clothing. You don't like this bit, isn't it? Because it's talking about dying. Many of us don't want to die. Three, for we will put on the heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh. But it is not that we want to die and get rid of um, these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on an, our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. Hmm. God himself has prepared us for this. And, a guarantee, and as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. Amen. You see, this is a very powerful word of God that Paul is trying to draw attention to. So, in summary of these two portions of scripture we've read, have hope in a better future. Tell somebody. Know that our present troubles are small and won't last long. Hello? It will not last long. Just stay in there. Keep your faith. Trust in the Lord. Hold on to the end. Hallelujah. Troubles will produce for us glory. Hallelujah. And it says we should not look at the physical. But rather we should gaze at things not seen. Fix your eyes on that which is yet to come. If you fix your eyes on the earthly things and the things that are around us, you will miss the point. Gaze at things not seen. Things not seen will last forever. And God's guarantee to you and I, all of us, is the Holy Spirit which he places in us. And I pray that each and every one of us will yearn if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. If he is not ruling and reigning in your life. In Romans chapter 5, verse 5, verse 5 says that, And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with, with his love. So, if you put the last but one slide over there, it's a time for you to reflect on this. The last but one. What you just put there. So this is a question to us. Ask somebody next to you, are you ready? Did they say yes? That thing you are doing, if Christ should come around, would you be ready? That thing you are not doing, if Christ should come now, would you be ready? Please bow your head down.